Hi everyone, my name is Malcolm Westgate. I'm Science Advisor to the Atlas of Living Australia. I'm also a visiting fellow at the Australian National University and I'm here today to talk about my um, R package. I've been working on it for the last couple of years or so. It's called RevTools. Uh, it's been about a year since the last update on CRAN, so this is really an opportunity to give you guys a bit of an update. So I hope you enjoy it. Just to give you an outline, I'm going to talk about what led me to develop RevTools. Uh, I'm going to talk about where we're up to now and what its current uses are. And I'm going to give a bit of a sneak preview of the next release, which I'm hoping will be out in the next month or so. So, for context, um, I've put up this paper here, which um, I worked on back in, in 2015. Um, and it came out of a, a situation where some colleagues and I were interested in looking at, at themes in a set of documents. Um, and frankly, just didn't want to didn't want to um, go through a whole review process, honestly. We wanted to have a quick overview of what patterns were in that data set. And uh, we found a whole body of literature in the computer sciences on, on um, well, all sorts of things, natural language processing, uh, topic modeling, that sort of stuff. that just hadn't really been used at that point in the field that we we're in, which is ecology and conservation and biology. And so we thought that was, you know, really neat, and we did some work on it, and we thought it was a useful insight to publish, and so we published this paper. Um, that led, as part of writing that, that led to a code base, which uh, ended up becoming RevTools. And so we published this uh, last year in Research Synthesis Methods. This paper's, um, you can see the DOI there, you could Google it as well if you want to find it. Um, there's a preprint if they're charging you to get access to this from the journal. Um, that describes what the software does, but I'm going to give you a quick overview here um, for those who don't know. As an aside, while I was developing that work, I realized that maybe some people don't want to use topic models, and it's a fairly simple thing to display some text using a Shiny app. So, sort of almost as an afterthought, I built in some manual screening tools, and it turned out these have been of interest to some people, um, which is great. So um, there's a screen abstracts version, which you can see here. There's one that's for screening titles only. Um, and I think actually a bit more customization of these would be, would be desirable in future, which I'm hoping to get to at some point. From, so that's, that's basically what this software does. Um, and uh, at the moment, to visualize that in a different way, here's a, here's a flow diagram. So basically there's a function for reading in your own bibliographic data, you can then pass that to, to a function that builds a uh, document term matrix. So it literally uh, ca counts the number of terms and which uh, articles they occur in and, and, and um, plots those against one another. Um, and then you can run a topic model. Now, I, I never wrote any topic modeling code, but a lot of the rest of this was, was inherently built within, within RevTools from scratch. Um, you also have the option to uh, from from importing your data with read bibliography, you can go straight to building your own topic models via MagDTM, or you can pass your data to screen topics and it'll do that stage for you. What's different about the next uh, version that that's, that's nearing readiness for, for passing the CRAN is that we've outsourced our in, importing function, or rather we've spun them off. So Synthesizer is a project that I worked on with Eliza Grains last year. Um, it basically takes the RevTools import code and cleans it up a little and puts it in a separate package so that we can maintain that independently. Uh, that's been quite successful. I'm quite happy with that as a piece of software. Uh, it's on CRAN already. Uh, what we've also done is moved to Quantita for our, um, building um, document term matrices. Uh, I trust their code more than I trust mine, frankly, and they do a really good job, and so um, I'd suggest people check that out. And topic models, we've gone from the topic model package to um, structural topic models using STM, which again is a very fantastic piece of software, so I suggest people check it out. And the final thing that's changing is that um, screen topics will remain within RevTools, of course, but we're thinking of doing a full redesign just to make it a bit prettier than it used to be. Um, so... Uh, the other thing to consider is that um, I've mentioned on the left, that's the workflow that, that we currently have built into the package. That's fine, but what it, it, it I noticed there were a few problems, one of which is that you can't pre-calculate a topic model and send it to screen topics, which is uh, annoying if you want to do your own parameterization of a topic model, or if it's going to take a long time to run, you don't want it to be running in a Shiny app. So now the new version supports you 
calculating a topic model however you want and then just passing it to screen topics as a visualization tool alternatively there's some new functions that just enable you to do um, plotting using ggplot of um, the sort of diagrams you get from screen topics but in a static way and that can be useful for people doing um, visualization for, for publications for example. Um, the final thing that, that I'm adding is a function to preload a, um, uh, a shiny app so basically what that means is that if you want to be able to control what someone else if you're part of a team you want to say uh, this person should have 100 abstracts uh, which are these ones in a particular order and person two should have uh, 300 abstracts and they should be in a different order this enable this function enables you to build a shiny app and store it as an rds file and then you literally send it to the person however you want, Dropbox, email, whatever, and they can load it with a single uh, command, simply the same as you would on your own machine, screen abstracts, and they'll load it without any option to um, reorder or change the settings. Um, that can be useful also if you're doing things in experimental context, like checking uh, how long it takes people to screen things or, or the effect of doing things in a different order or with keyword highlighting, for example. So in summary, RevTools is packaged um, for combined screening and topic model visualization. I hope that this new set of tools make it more useful for a wider range of people and applications. Um, the next round of revisions I'm hoping will be around enabling the user to more deeply customize um, their um, screening experience. Uh, I don't know when that's gonna happen, but I'm hoping still this year. So uh, thanks for your time. Um, look forward to hearing any questions.